Hey everyone, so I just showed you how I arranged my studio for the Masterclass 2. And in this video, it's kind of part two, and I'm going to show you uh, some of the work that they, the students worked on. There were six students, and they're all advanced in that they've taken my Powerful Design and Personal Color course before. I had a chance to uh, videotape some of the students, not all of them, but some of them. Uh, who were okay with me videotaping them. And so you're going to get a chance to hear from them what they worked on, uh, kind of what they discovered, what, what kind of experience they had. And I think you'll enjoy uh, just hearing from some different viewpoints and a lot of different styles. Um, but these are all like very advanced artists. And so I hope you enjoy uh, what they have to say. Thank you. This is Terry Beck Engel, and we are just so happy to have her here in Hamilton, Montana, in my studio. This is the master class level two, and she's here, and she's going to be telling us about herself and her journey that she's been on, not just here in the studio during this four-day class, but what led up to her being here and uh, just all the fun that she had and, and all that she shared with other people. So, Terry, take it away. I just have found the... The time spent here to be um, challenging and also deeply fulfilling at the same time. And uh, one of the things I, I think I've enjoyed being challenged with was setting some goals for myself in the beginning of the class. And a couple of my goals were to spend a fair amount of time in the play portion of the creation of my work and giving myself the freedom to do that and allowing just that aspect of uh, who I am to just come out and giving, like I, I give it the child in the candy store. This is one of Terry's paintings right here. Tell us what you discovered along the way. Well, I think um, the first again was just the permission to spend time in the initial stages of really, really playing and exploring with marks, exploring with um, colors and then also at the same time navigating um, as that child um, became a wiser child and the child was still there, um, m being sure that the colors were harmonious and so I think that was a big task given the, 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 the number of colors. It's not, a, it's not a very limited palette and so the challenge for me was how to have these colors play well together with each other. Um, and by having a harmonious, uh, always working with a harmonious um, mixture uh, and even using the colors mixed together and always adding that part of that mixture into any other color mix that I made brought the colors closer together. And then it's that exploration of, um, you know, how can you travel through this painting and, and find um, both places of of, of rest because it's obviously got a lot going on in it but at the same time um, you know being able to find something that draws you in and that you can explore and maybe play in. And then what about this painting over here? Because yeah so this is the sister related. painting yeah yeah so again the color palette is is the same um, but again it was important for me that they they um, they were compatible with each other but they had their own unique identity as well and so Right. You'll see uh, color palette, but also um, some shapes that are maybe uh, a little bit different from one another, maybe just in terms of their size, like the rounded shapes with the edging around them. You know, these are much more, they're, they're in a quieter area, um, so they have, a, you know, more, uh, if we would squint, you would lose seeing them, um, and yet they're also bigger. But there's a repetition of sh shapes without them being identical, because you know who want, you love to be your sister, but you also want to have your unique identity. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a ton of variation. In yeah, yeah. It's just extraordinary. The closer you get, the more you see. Mm -hmm. But they're also really right. strong from a distance, and I think they really speak to one mm -hmm. another. They're going to be a beautiful pair, uh, whether they stay together, you know, hanging uh, yeah. in close proximity to each other or not. Who knows, right? Yes. But you, you have a place in mind for hanging these already, right? I do, yeah. and they'll they'll have a wall uh, for the two of them together, Yay. and, uh, and there'll be a little space, some, some healthy space between them. But they'll also, you know, be very clear that they they go together, and they're going to be a, a place where you enter in. And so for me, it'll be kind of a expression, welcome of, of who lives here. 
So this is Sue Behrens, and she's from Whitewater, Wisconsin. She's been in my master class, too, and it's been such a pleasure and an honor to have her in my studio here in Hamilton, Montana. She's a fabulous artist. I met her in Wisconsin at Shake Ray Galley, and she's here um, to talk about these very lar this very large work that she's done that is really a four sheets of arches paper, and she's done a lot of work on it in four days. And I'm going to hand the microphone over to Sue so she can talk about her painting. Hi Pam. Um, I came to this class. Um, one of my intentions to work was um, what's important to me in my work lately has been layering. And so I needed to continue with the experiment of layering. Um, working with values was another um, important part of painting that I wanted to experiment with and learn more about. Um, I kind of set myself up for a major challenge by doing this. First of all, the size is, this is the largest I have ever painted, like four times larger than I have ever painted. So that was one major challenge. Second one was I worked on the floor. And I learned a lot about painting the size. First of all, oh, such as the layerings, I had to use larger shapes, which I use, I make out of torn paper to help create my shapes. And I use a lot of transparent colors and a limited palette as well. So this painting first started off with a neutral palette, the background, and then I wanted to experiment with a large shape. So I did a wash and I applied the shape using a mop head. So it was a fun experiment. I learned from it and I continued to work with this idea. Normally I don't start a painting with a preconceived idea and this is one of the reason why because I usually find myself fighting with it. And so overnight I realized I just can't do that. I have to work with my layerings again. Yeah, that's one thing I noticed about Sue's work is that she has a really uh, beautiful, sensitive touch. And as she develops her work, um, she has a, a really good way of working with subtle values and um, really good sense of harmony and shape and balance. and. I'm very excited to follow Sue and her career and where she goes with this. And she's such a dedicated artist and such a wonderful person that I feel very honored to have her here in the studio. So thank you very much, Sue. So this is Julie Braverman, and you're from Traverse City, Michigan. Michigan. Yes. And how long have you been painting? Uh, well, I would say probably been painting my whole life. Uh, but initially, I started out helping my father as an illustrator, architectural illustrator. Then I went to art school, graduated with a fine arts degree. And then I went back to um, school and got a degree in architecture. Once I got started in cold wax, I felt I wanted to play with it a lot. And, um, and I also wanted to move in the direction of abstract. In the last year, I've really begun to find my own voice, and I started working vertically uh, with a lot of vertical line, and uh, actually a lot of hard edge. And um, so that was, I did a series, and uh, playing with the medium as much as I, trying to understand it, and then coming to this um, workshop, um, I knew I wanted to work vertically, but I couldn't use the hard edge anymore because now I'm working on um, 60, let's see, 66 inch sheets. Yeah. So, um, you know, so now it was, had to do more with my body, moving my hand up and down. I'm interested in, um, uh, mark making, using a lot of different, you know, there's 
pencil in there, charcoal in there, paint uh, layered on it, um, and I I feel a lot of freedom in um, how I make the marks. Um, I don't. I I just like to really push into the. Um, into the image and um, just kind of push it. And so that's what I've ended up with. I feel that the first time I took your workshop, um, I was really trying to learn about the medium. Mm -hmm. And um, now I feel um, I've got some kind of skill mm -hmm. to be freer with my experimentation and um, I don't feel that I'm spending a lot of time thinking about it I'm just doing it so that's very freeing. Certainly this group of artists uh, is I mean we knew each other from the last workshop and we are I believe all very strong artists moving in our own directions. So this was um, a really very comfortable environment to be in because we had that. And I feel because of the size of the group, uh, it gave you enough time to move between us. And I, Pam, you're amazing that you can f go from one of us to another one. and. Um, focus and see things that um, really help us draw our work out and okay. so that's that's a, a very important strength that you have and bring to this experience. Thank you very much. Well thank you Julie. I really appreciate it and I wish you all the best with your work. It's just thank you. really taking off. So we're listening to Ann Pletchak. Am I saying your name right? Yes, that's good Ann enough. Ann Pletchak, okay. She's been taking the master class two. She already took the master class one in Shaker Galley in Mineral Point, and she's been painting for how many years? Oh, about 15. 15 years. About 15 okay. years. So, and what other mediums have you worked in? A uh, long time ago, watercolor, a lot of life drawing, a um, little bit of oil. Absolutely couldn't get on with acrylic so far. Okay. Um, discovered uh, cold wax about three years ago and really that was a turning point for me okay. and so the last couple of years it's been a kind of journey of discovery on composition but at, I like the formal aspects of composition but I've got to the point where I was creating rigidity in my work so my challenge this time was to have a zero rigidity, but try and play it off opposing forces of geometry. Okay, the first thing I discovered is there's a difference between uh, glazes and washes. That was completely new to me. Uh, so the wash areas are here where they're almost like a watercolor and they're fairly dry. So any mark making you make underneath are really come out. Uh, but you can also hold, like a watercolor, uh, you can also hold the, the lights and the brights. So with that and mark making, whenever I put on opaque paint, um, it was kind of heavy. So here I would glaze stuff really, or I would put on opaque and then I'd wash it off because it was too heavy in contrast to the, to the glaze. So I think you should use probably a wash and a glaze, not go straight from a wash to a solid opaqueness. That I think was what was causing me uh, the paint didn't look good against it and the, and the wash didn't look good. But in fact, by watering this down, if you like, with Gamsol, then it became a, gla a wash on a glaze. And that was similar, more similar to me, so it wasn't quite so big a jump. So then I end up with something that's very busy, but the play is really transparency and opaqueness. Um, and it's very busy, and a couple of things I learned Oh, well, the biggest thing I learned probably at the end was that by throwing in a very large opaque shape on the top, that had the ability to push everything else back, the busyness. So that was really useful. And the other thing I learned, which was major, didn't matter what shape I put in, all I had to do was to re-knit it back in by putting my mark making on it. And as soon as I did that, it kind of belonged, it didn't sit on the top. 
And the only piece I think that I don't have any knitting back in is this piece here. Yeah. So by crossing things over again, you ha it's a way of taking them from the surface back into the painting. So and that was a huge learning right. thing. Your idea of knitting then is overlapping. Yeah, That's sorry, I'm using no, it's great, knitting I it in. Yeah. So it sort of knits it into the whole process. Yeah. Okay, okay thank, thank you, you very much. Okay. Bye.